essentially you can think of this as a two week later extension on their previous series. And what is game six pick and bands gonna look like? It's gonna be amazing. Obviously the homework has been done throughout the split, but we see it constantly changing these teams. Now understand that change hopefully better than the other as they match up here in this best of five. We see that, Ooh. you know, Cloud9 can come back in those late game series. It's gonna be tough for Immortals. And this looks like Immortals want to pinch the Rek'Sai and first pick that away here because top lane is already being pinched by Cloud9. And yeah, Huni has such a personal pool. This is lining up for a first pick Rek'Sai. If we've seen anything, the Karma and the Rumble are not surprising bans for Cloud9. Karma has been their most banned champion throughout the playoffs, and the Rumble has been banned all but one game against Huni, so not too many surprises on that side. Yeah, and Huni also has a 100% win rate on that Rumble in when he's game. able to play. <laughs> Actually, he's played about uh, six, I believe, in the all of summer Correct. throughout that, and yeah. then when I hear about scrims, it's like, you can't leave that open for him. It's gonna be the Gnar and the Jin on the side of Cloud9 as they see that Rek'Sai. So they will wait on the jungle, obviously. And the Jin is a great pickup. Sneaky's been able to do so much with it. Yeah, and if we look at the priority of these champions from the playoffs, the Jin is right at the top for Sneaky. The Sivir actually, I feel like, would be at the top for Immortals, and it's what they've had the most success with throughout the regular season. Yeah. And they're almost trapped into doing the Ash against it right now if they want to bring CC from the bottom lane, which is something they've been trying to do ever since the latter half of the regular season. So that's something that Immortals is going to be picking into unless they have a pretty big departure from their strategy over the last couple weeks. Vlad left up, not something yep. we see very often, as well as the Echo. So already a lot of power brought here by Immortals into this game. Yeah, and the team that will leave the Vladimir up is typically Cloud9 because they True. favor that Cassiopeia so much for Jensen that they sometimes even blind pick it for him. And we saw that he was able to solo kill Bjergsen in yep. that matchup in the finals in game one. And this is one of the things that's evolved throughout the playoffs. The last time these guys played in the semifinals, Cloud9 actually banned Vladimir in every single game of the series. But then in the finals, yeah. they left it open. It was first picked by TSM and they picked the Cassiopeia into it. So do not be surprised if even though they haven't picked it yet, ah. if they go with the Cassiopeia on the final pick for Cloud9. And this may have been what Immortals Whoa. were also going for with a Zac pick here from Cloud9. Pinch the jungle immediately, try to get him on that Zac because that was the game that Meteos did falter on a little bit. I actually don't like Cloud9 picking Zac so early here. I think the Cassiopeia could have been a safe pick into the Vladimir because this unlocks Wild Turtles Ezreal a lot better. He played it in the fifth game Yep. against CLG when he went off on it in Toronto. And Ezreal is very good against Zac. That's now two targets that can essentially avoid Zac with the Vladimir and the Ezreal. And I think Meteos is gonna struggle to find the right things to Elastic Slingshot into. I think uh, he picked it too early. A lot of the times Immortals will kind of stump you on a pick ban phase and you won't know what they come out with. But this time we see many champions that are usually on that ban list. And this team is scary from Immortals. It rounds out with the Cassiopeia you guys were talking about for the Cloud9. Yeah, and Jat, you said they may have picked the Zac a little too early. If you're gonna pick the Cassiopeia and you know the Vladimir matchup, well, yeah, they Could've maybe done it earlier. Have waited on that. Yeah, the obviously if Meteos is just confident on Zac, we know that the jungle was pinched with the Gragas being banned and the Rek'Sai being first picked. So if he's not gonna be going for Zac, he's probably going for Elise. Yes. So there, you can see why he was willing to pick it early and you want to give Jensen as much flexibility as possible. But I'm actually pretty happy from, from a moral standpoint with the draft they've been able to put together. Yeah, but when I look at Cloud9's draft, it's uh, a big question for me is how is Impact going to do on this NAR? Because it has been his go-to champion. They first yep. picked it for him many times first round and he has been an absolute monster. He's been, honestly, SKT Impact, you know what we've been saying that? He's Cloud9 <laughs> Impact right now. This guy, yeah. it's a new era for him and he's redefining himself. And, and people haven't been able to figure yeah. out what to pick against his NAR. In other regions, like if we watch Samsung versus KT, you saw QV play Kennen against it and crush. But when you see Kennen get played against Impact Snar, he just solo kills Seraph like 17 times. So he's been dominating on that champion. Absolutely amazing. We're going to be keeping an eye on the top lane as well. This series is going to be a close one. Let us know which way you think it's going to swing by tweeting us hashtag IMTWin or hashtag C9Win to show your support. And we'll tally those up and show them on screen as we get into game. Everybody's wondering about the top lane, but each lane here could carry the game for either team as we come into this matchup. Who will be the final qualifier going to Worlds for NA? We're gonna find out here in this best of five series, Immortals versus Cloud9. And we are on the Rift. When I look at the compositions immediately, I look at the Immortals composition and think that Adrian, you know, he's a big part of their CC here. 
and he has to be on point with his bindings in fights as well as his ultimates to possibly set up Huni for those team fights. It's a lot of backline dive with the uh, Vladimir as well as having the Echo. So they're going to try to get onto Sneaky and blow up these low mobility carries. Yeah, the Bard is definitely something we haven't seen a lot of from Adrian. His champion pool has changed a lot as the season has progressed. He was the range support guy yeah. with the Soraka and right. the Janna earlier on, which was different than the 2015 version of Adrian, who was the engage guy. Yeah, the Leona on... and all of that stuff. He even played Morgana back when he was in uh, Challenger as 10Q. Yeah. And, and I think one of the biggest criticisms of Adrian is like, oh, small champion pool can't play very much because when he does find his champions, he seems to focus on them. But what's interesting this year, his Tarek was fantastic yeah. in Toronto. And now we're going to get to see what his bard brings to the table. And like you said, it's a focal point of this composition and he has to be able to land that CC. He's also somebody you never really, uh, until, uh, or I guess in the back in the day, getting that Leona band, he really doesn't see too many band towards him now. So if he can mm -hmm. keep playing the same things, Hide those in the back, practice them when you can, and then you bring them out on the rift. Nobody expects it because you're that guy that just plays ranged. Yeah, exactly. The Soraka used to be the second most banned champion mm -hmm. against Immortals, but right behind the Rumble, but right. people haven't been banning it as of late. It just Rock hasn't been Rock. the same type of... Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's funny, too, because you would think that it would be a high-priority ban because standard lanes and right. high-priority pick, That's the Soraka true. usually does well in them, but because we're having such types of carry top laners and mid laners with lower CC, you have to have some type of CC from the bot lane. It's why we're seeing a lot of protection uh, champions like Bard, like Rom, like Tom Kench that also have some CC. Yeah, and I also find that really interesting because if when we look at Immortals and their 17 and one regular season yeah. in the spring and even their great start in the summer, they were getting away without a lot of CC in their composition, yet they consistently pointed that out as a flaw in their drafts and have worked towards putting more CC in. Yet, when they do put the CC in the bottom lane, it does seem like they have some execution problems actually pulling it off. So it's been a bit of a strange year for Mortals as they try to change their strategy and have stumbled. Yeah, and this is even just a lower CC composition than most AD carries would usually have because it's the Ash, the Jin, and even the Sivir sometimes is just used for utility. Ezreal's just pure damage, a little yep. bit of kiting too. As you jump into the lanes, impact taking a bit of a hit, but Huni's got the long range that he can keep throwing out across minions, so no worries. Should be safe on both sides for now, just farming up. Good spot for Huni though to have this wave, as it's just going to keep piling up in his favor. Junglers are opposite sides of the map, so we may not see too much action just yet. Let's see if Rainover may get some warning done here. Yeah, Rainover's actually done a very interesting path. He started at his Grom, ran down to his red buff, and now has doubled back towards the top side. So it almost seems like he's there to aid Huni in case he gets ganked. Because oftentimes, if Huni's pushed up around three and a half minutes, <laughs> is when you would expect a gank to arrive in that lane. But Rainover is in the vicinity to prevent that. And of course, Meteos is nowhere close, but this is total yeah. guesswork as far as junglers are concerned. Yeah, and things are a little bit more Surprise. predictable with standard Ooh. lanes, too, because you know that junglers start on the top side of the map. They don't start on the bottom because they. Uh, AD Carry wants to take that camp. Right. So Medios didn't gank around three minutes. So then Rainover was able to go to the top side, make sure that he could get some coverage over there. And Adrian even invaded just to make sure. This choice in Zach as well does allow Jensen to get that blue buff as Rainover would be giving it over to Pole Belter. So he kind of keeps in pace with that. Not that Pole Belter needs that much mana. Yeah. And also when we look at this top lane matchup, the biggest thing to point out is the jungle proximity percentage. This is the percentage of the time the jungler is within 2,000 units of the top laner. You can see more than double for Huni with yeah. Rainover, and that's actually a little bit lower um, than you would expect sometimes with the way Ra Rainover would camp for Huni. But it just kind of goes to show that Impact has been having this performance without the help of media. Very, very true. He said it was so easy to play alongside him. Just top die and yeah. <laughs> you don't have to worry about him. You don't gank for him and he still gets kills. Yeah, he's really been almost like a luxury for the team since playoffs started where, yeah. yeah, you don't have to put anything into him and he's just paying it off. It's weird. It's a great performance from him. The things he's been able to do recently creates such a scramble for the opposing team. If he can get that lead, he understands like he, he may die in the side lane, but his pressure is actually useful. I don't know if Immortals is going to let that Rain pressure go to gank waste, fast. Though. He's on a ward, so C9's got a play retreat. Nice gank. Looks to go for Smoothie. He can still jump back to Sneaky here if he wants to. Actually goes for the flash out the heal as well from Sneaky. Two summoner spells is critical yep. for Rainover on that gank. It does cost him a decent amount of health, and he did reveal on the map, but that's actually a great gank for him. He needed to recall anyways because he hadn't shopped, and with two summoners down, that can apply a lot of pressure from yeah. that dual side. Exactly, especially a flash where you can just repeat gank that. Use your own flash to end up 
uh, closing that distance and almost guaranteeing a kill next time he visits. So this may pull Meteos' attention towards the bottom, which could be a little bit of a jungle map movement uh, juke, where now maybe Rainover plays towards the top side because he gave advantage to his bottom already. He saw Meteos throw a quick ward in there, starting to get forward runs in. Gives him an idea of where Rainover is. We saw in their previous match with Zac that just one missed gank on Zac kind of threw the game in favor of Immortals there. He had two good ones, but just a, a hair away on a third one, and it yeah. swings it. That was totally Jensen, though. I'm going to say that. <laughs> Jensen missed so many skill shots in that one. Yeah, and you look at him now, he's level five. That's around the time when Zach's ganks start to become a little bit threatening. Level mm -hmm. six, seven, and nine are the other big breakpoints where he gets the big ganks off. And the fact that Rainover hasn't heavily counter junk with Meteos or had right. successful ganks before that point does actually favor Cloud9 a little bit because this is when Zach can look to kind of bring things back, so to speak, in a normal matchup. But he actually hasn't really fallen that far behind yet. Yep. Jensen able to keep CS up, 58 to 44. I won't see too much roaming from these mid laners just yet, though, as they keep each other pushed into their turrets. Impact has finally gotten to the other side of the river with his wave, so we'll see if he can do any damage to Booney, who is easily farming up. Pretty safe game overall. Nobody really wants to make the first move, it seems here. But Rainover wow. with the vision knowledge. Actually, yeah. lack of vision, still just trying it, I should say. Yeah, look at the gap in wards for C9 on the bottom mm -hmm. side of that map, and a lot of this is a continuation of Rainover's gank earlier. He got two summoners out of the bottom side. Therefore, yeah. Smoothie and Sneaky don't want to push up. Meteos doesn't want to visit a losing lane, so they just kind of abandon that side of the map. And Rek'Sai is spectacular at soloing yep. the dragon. He gets a little bit of help from Adrian and Turtle because they're pushed up, and that's a great early advantage for Immortals. Yeah, and you can see that Meteos was trying to make something happen on the top side of the map. Maybe if Huni plays a little too far forward, but Huni was aware of where he needed to be, and the Ocean Drake falls into his hands, which is great for Echo because you're spending so much mana in yeah. trades early on against Dinar. Rainover as well, making quick work of all of his camps. Meteos gets a tunnel on his way in and out there. Gromp perfectly spawns as he void rushes in. And they're not too far behind each other. Pretty close, 36-32. Building up on their items here as Meteos is taking a little longer to go back and get that second purchase in. Cloud Drake is coming up next. And so far, the only pressure towards bottom was acted on as a dragon here for Immortals. They didn't go back at Sneaky and Smoothie for another gank just yet. Yeah, and we think about the top lane matchup so much between Impact and Huni. We've seen the jungle pressure on the bottom side, but the mid lane matchup in this game is really interesting to me as well because Pobelter feels so confident on Vladimir. When you hear him talk about this pick, he usually thinks it's GG as soon as they get a lock. He's amazing on it in team fights. But then you look at Jensen, who has probably equally as much confidence lately on Cassiopeia. Yeah. Yeah, the 7-0 exactly. Pobelter. It's GG when he gets it a lot of the time. Jensen picked Vla uh, Cassiopeia into Bjergsen's Vladimir, and that was the only win C9 had in the finals. Yeah. Then had to deal with Bjergsen's Cassiopeia and got crushed. So these are two players on champions they're very good at, and they're really isolated in that mid lane, which is super exciting. Hopefully we get a little action out of them too. Like you said, Pobalter going hard. That flash up means the play could be made. But the same from Jensen as we get a little bit down here. Scuffle around the Dragon Pit. Twin Fangs is going to push Pobal out. Really bad. Oh, okay. it should be easy on Woo. that one. No, no ignites for the mid laners. Yeah. Early pool there, too. <laughs> Making sure that he can't follow him. That's true. A few more flash and yeah. a poison tick could definitely take him out. It still puts him very low and in a bad position in this lane. Dragon's already down, so kind of fighting over scuttle control here, as well as possibly picking out some summoners. Nothing comes of it, really. Looks like Jensen and Pobal are both hold there. As Rainover gets control of the area, and they now get to sneak in a little bit here. Got to be careful not to mess up this. That was great pressure by Rainover, yes. forcing the smite. Yep. Jensen may wow. have wanted to stick around a little bit longer in lane, but he knows he's going to run out of mana right now. He even baits his recalls like, wait a minute, Pobelt was shoved up. Now he has to lane with lower mana, and that's going to allow Pobelt to catch up. Exactly. Cassiopeia, it's a little bit free to actually CS with this because you get mana back when you last hit, but he has his tier and he wants to be able to just spam the spells out with a high frequency. The command has been given Yeah, by Hive. Activate Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was extremely powerful for him last uh, regional qualifier, that's for sure. Yeah, and that's a very interesting thing to note because Cloud9, since their inception, have always made worlds. And if they make it this time, it's the first time they've done it without high. And you look at Immortals, and this is the team that was basically built to go to worlds. For some reason, there's a curse all over the world on teams to do that. 
and they don't find Super themselves. <laughs> Super teams. Super don't find themselves going. Another amazing split. And if that's number two, that's it's crazy if they don't go. Yeah, going 33 and three. Yeah, overall over right. the year in regular season, and then failing in playoffs twice and getting third place. It could be one of the biggest flops that a team has seen in postseason in NA. Oh. Well, that's block by smoothie. They are the final boss here. We'll see if they can uh, put up that fight. Yeah. Good knockout on the top lane by Impact as bot lane making a little bit aggressive. We thought it would stay calm. Yeah, and to just combo off that Sirene, high stakes for all of these teams. Like, yeah. Rain over and Hooney were in the world semifinals last year. Wild Turtle, since he joined the competitive scene back in 2013, always goes to worlds. Like, both of these teams have so much on the line, mm -hmm. but only one of them gets to go. And it, for whatever reason, I feel like they're both good enough to they go. They are. But oh, at, only yeah. one can, which makes this game really tense. Clear that wave impact. Boom. Very satisfying. Instantly gets him a good back there and forces Huni to have to use the ultimate to go back. Small advantages that are making Huni, or I'm sorry, impact a little bit bigger. You got that CS lead. Huni can obviously still put up a huge fight as he comes in. He'll be right for sneaky on that back line and looking for Jensen. So the fights are going to be hectic with these divers. Yeah, and it almost seems like this game is going to be going into whoever can get the item power spikes first yeah. and then force a team fight in the right spot because. Impact has a minor CS advantage over mm -hmm. Huni. Jensen has a minor CS advantage over Pobelter. And then the dual lane for Immortals has a minor CS advantage over yeah. C9, thanks to the gank. I think favorably wise, the solo lanes are kind of going towards C9. But if Huni gets his Trinity Force around the time Impact gets Frozen Mallet, and likewise with the Spirit Visage on Pobelter, like those 10 CS advantages aren't actually going to matter in team right. fights. It's going to be all about the team fight setup. Exactly. Like, and the team fights really matter because these teams are not exactly built for sieging. Sure, you have a split pushing top laner if they get ahead, yeah. but your wave clear and the other four members is a little bit unsafe. C9, they have a little bit better wave clear, but Immortals will struggle in that regard if they're put in a siege situation. So it's about those team fights. And something we have to keep a look on in those fights is both supports exhaust. High damage from the mid laners. Huni as well in that top lane. What's the choice? You can't make the wrong with that exhaust in that moment. It's gonna be very, very tense with the supports as well. Keep an eye on everything as it comes around. Our only 20 or 12 minutes in on this one and still zero deaths. First blood, first turret still to come. So we're looking for that gold lead to actually pop out of nowhere. It doesn't look like anybody's setting up too much to make that happen. Rain over, however, is getting himself. Yep into Meteos' jungle. Going to Meteos' jungle, they saw that Meteos was hanging out by the Raptors, so now Pobelter will play a little bit safer in the meantime, because he hasn't seen the Zac yeah. leave the jungle. They're also playing to this side on Cloud9's bottom half. Uh, they shoved up the wave, they have their support and AD carry in that tri brush, and they're just trying to protect that red buff. Protect the red buff, also just get control of the jungle here. It's what C9 kind of seems to have done. Turtle and Adrian could be in a little bit of trouble if they decided to dive, but with all the people that can faint down bottom, it wouldn't be a very, it could be a dive that gets turned around because almost everyone from Mortals could arrive. Yeah, and they don't have uh, vision control in that jungle, so you can see Pobelter just hanging out there. He doesn't know just yet mm. that Cassiopeia is down there. Now he's going to see that and say, okay, I can shove it up because if he had gone straight into that bush, he may have been killed and chased down oh. by Jensen. Yeah, the tension to me in this game is really building up because I don't expect the teams to stay this passive for much longer. Mm -hmm. They played a five game series two weeks ago and the fewest kills we had in any of those games yeah. was 24. So I feel like the pace is gonna increase pretty hectically uh, pretty soon. Game and that's been Immortals thing too, is once the game gets out of hand, they just keep going. Whether they lost the fight, they try to win the next one, yeah. or if they won that fight, they're like, all right, this fight's gonna be easier. And they keep doing that. It's that skirmish style. Once they find an advantage, they don't just sit on it. They try to push it out. And that's exactly what this is building to be. The later they go, the more damage they have. The one fight now means turrets after that, means much more after that, since you're farther into the game. Almost got a solo one there. Impact trying to put another one in the book. Yep. And this is before Frozen Mallet. So Impact is doing a tremendous job to pressure Huni. Huni wants to recall and then alt back, but he also doesn't want to recall before he has enough gold for his Trinity Force. So he's on a really greedy timing right here to try and make sure he doesn't get solo killed. And there really hasn't been any, not, I wouldn't even say love for Medios, but it's almost like Impact is saying, no pressure towards this lane. Let it be 1v1. If Brainover comes up, I'll do the best to save myself. But Medios has kept himself in the jungle and more towards the bottom lane mid 
And Meteos hasn't fallen very far behind Rainover and CSI. Mm -hmm. I think Rainover, from a team fight perspective, is going to be much stronger right now. Cinder Hulk and Durham's fist fully stacked up right there. But Meteos isn't even com sitting on a completed jungle item yet. He really wants to get a Cinder Hulk, but he's kind of a little bit of everything in that uh, in that item build. Yeah, there's always that risk if you back right now that a gank happens on top side. It's just that Rainover pressure, and Cloud Drake is also on the table, and the vision control has just fallen off. So he has to back, finally get some items for himself and then that's reestablished control, and that's why he's coming back with a lot of wards. Oh, sneaky oh, impact there. Ever. And and Mega. Mega. Quick hit, does have Chrono Break. Woo. Mega will come off of the minions, and this may just be a teleport back or a Chrono Break back. Rainover was even topside to give him a little bit of support here. Yeah, that would have been interesting if Impact had actually launched off his head and got ahead of him. Into mm. the turret range. Rainover was in the area, so he was or kind of ahead, prepared for that. Yeah, that's going to mean item break points hit by both of these guys. Huni ulted back actually before he could heal the full, but he did stack up his corruption mm -hmm. potion and he's maintaining his teleport with the Triforce. But when Impact gets Frozen Mallet, I feel like that's yep, a power spike is. that actually helps Impact more than it helps the Trinity Force user in Echo. Yeah, that's very true. It ends up allowing him to chase you down the lane, so every time you push up past the middle point, you risk getting solo killed by the Gnar, whereas the Echo, it gives you that cooldown reduction so you can keep farming the wave with your double Qs. But other than that, it's mostly for killing the AD carry. Now this becomes a little scary. Jensen, Morella, Namakon with that Abyssal Scepter. He can definitely still kill Wild Turtle or somebody quick if oh, they wow. come up. Does it look like they're gonna beat that one up? Pony just backed and bought an Elixir of Sorcery. Hasn't popped it yet, so he is waiting. Fight time, he stole it! Oh, Meteos able to get it. Remember, he still have his, has his passive. Pobalter gets knocked out. We're gonna see Adrian going down. The Tempered Fate does not help too much. And they are on to Smoothie Immortals. Now losing two more. Double kill coming in now for Sneaky. This is huge for Cloud9. And they are just able Going to over. route Immortals. They pushed them back into the own side oh. near their blue buff. And now they are on to Wild oh, nice Turtle. Slow. That's going to be the cleanup. It seemed like all of Immortals alts just kind of did nothing to the C9 composition. I, it was such a strange setup because it almost looked like Immortals was just going to be gifted the Drake, and I think that put them That's what caught me into a guard. false sense of security, but guess what? Meteos can fly across the screen, steals the Drake, and that itself was a distraction, what? and it, it almost felt like Immortals was distracted in that fight, yeah. whereas C9 was very focused. And that's going to be the first turret gold as well, going over to Cloud9, and it's just split between Meteos and Sneaky here. That's the explosion we were waiting for in this game. Yeah. And now the question will be whether or not Immortals can recover from that, because in the past, they just continue to go in. But that is such a massive team fight loss. Yeah, and let's see this again, because they pull it out, and then Immortals start walking through. It's already half HP. They think they're going to be gifted it, like you said, but it's right on the Scuttle Crab. They have full vision of this. Yeah, and I was expecting Hooney to teleport in earlier. He yeah. was recalled and running back to base, yet it's it's Impact that beats him heavily to this. The Jin ultimate gets a couple of shots off before the Bard ultimate hits. Adrian ends up falling, and then pulled out there only gets his ultimate on a small crew of people. So really, it's like Riv said, the Immortals ultimates didn't really amount to anything in this fight. Yeah, and in contrast, the Cloud9 ultimates were quite good. Sneaky ended up getting yeah. a kill with one of his, and then Smoothie's ultimate was across two to three people there, and one of them was Pobelter, so he was holding up the Vladimir from getting towards that back line. It's been a lot of that fight trying to figure out where the alts went. It seems like they just yeah. to the void. Well. Huni didn't have his. That's right. Pobelto used his on yeah, a few just people. Came back up. Rek'Sai doesn't really have a real ultimate, and Adrian's ultimate was used directly onto Sneaky. So, like, yeah. they used them, but they just weren't going to have a big impact. Well, this is what you talked about, Zyrene. Once it opens up, Immortals, whether they were on the winning or losing end, they're still going into fight as soon as they come back. They recognize an opening in mid and are able to break down that turret. That allows for more forward vision. His impact here, creating his own pressure on the top side for the entirety of this 20 minutes. Gets the turret for himself. It gets turret for himself, and now Meteos actually looking towards the mid lane just to shove it back out and make sure that they can establish a little bit of control here. They bring their bottom lane as well. And it's a little bit of a siege situation here. Yeah, it's the only remaining outer turret for Immortals. C9 was able to take the top and the bottom, and since they still have some shove in the bottom side, it's natural that they move people up here and maybe try and get some wards in the jungle, but respect is given. They back away. It's time to buy some items. And speaking of buying items, it's the Trinity Force as well for Wild Turtle. So this composition will kill turrets quite quickly with the double Trinity Forces when they get to them. But it's, once again, low CC, no Iceborne Gauntlet here. So when you're in these team fights, you really have to make the CC you have count. Yeah, and that means not having the Bard ultimate just used to interrupt the Jin ultimate after it does damage. It needs to be used to help initiate the fights and get in range so that 
Cooney and Pobelther can set up. Yeah. That is one of the greatest synergies that we have with Bard is the Echo Parallel Convergence. You just get the two and a half second stun right. off of the Bard Stasis, but that's never going to happen in the manner that Immortals played the last fight. Well, that's the typical use of the Bard Ultimate is to interrupt the Jin. so Adrian is going to have to first off yeah. realize that he needs to use it onto somebody like Jensen and Sneaky simultaneously, but Cloud9 can avoid that because I think that Smoothie is doing a great job of stalling the front line. Ooh, Rain over looking to do a little warding by himself. Always a dangerous preposition. Woo. He gets himself taken out as Cloud9 collapses immediately. This may be the pressure they need for mid. And Rain over once again, he hasn't really been looking like himself since playoffs started. Yep. And this is maybe the start of something where there's playoffs Rain over, where there's a lot of pressure on him, and Immortals just haven't been able to deliver in that circumstance. Gorgeous CC chain by C9 right there, and they only Ooh. burn the Zac wow. ultimate, so they go straight to Baron. All right. This will delay, but will they continue on? If Baron's at 5k health, the mortals would have to go. Pobelter throws the Hemoplague down. Three members having to back off. Exhaust very early onto Pobelter. He's able to pull that off. Full damage now coming in from Immortals if they want to start attacking, and that scares C9 enough for them to pull off. Baron at 20 minutes is incredibly threatening and can take half of a team's health by himself. So when Immortals approach, they're very smart not to fully commit knowing that C9's going to have Baron threat from the other side, yeah. and I think C9 smartly back off without suffering any casualties. Overall, still a good exhaust from Smoothie as he tries to mitigate that Hemo Plague damage and make sure nobody falls to some extra Baron, Baron hits on the way out. Five to one here as things have definitely started to heat up. Mortals looking for a lot more. Impact cleaning up a wave in the top side here as Hooney might have a little bit of time to roam and help the team out. Exactly, and in 45 seconds, that Infernal Drake spawns, and that's mm -hmm. what everybody is setting up for now. Get your visions down. Get your visions down. Get your vision down. <laughs> Get all your visions. Get all your, your visions, visions down. down. <laughs> mm, and it's interesting from an itemization standpoint. Impact has got the build with Black Cleaver, Frozen Mallet. Uh, although the Cleaver is completed before any real armor has been stacked up on the Immortals outside of the Warden's Mail from Rainover. So the ideal for Cloud9 is if Impact could have turret threat while the Drake is being taken and then still arrive first. Really, C9 is hoping for a repeat performance from the last Drake where Meteos can get a nice engage and Immortals can't engage with the bar. Or he just catch Adrian, or right rain over. Very close. Woo. That's not good for Immortals. His ultimate's down as well, so he can't get to full health before this Drake is forced. We don't see it very often, but Immortals now having to use almost quite a few things in defense. Looks like they're a little hesitant to take away at this dragon. And this Drake is incredibly important for both teams. You really want this if you're Immortals, but it's also a Jin and Cassiopeia with one TP right into the middle of everybody here from Huni, and Pobelter goes in. They're on Meteos right now, trying to get on Smoothie very low as he flashes out as well. Impact in the middle of the fight on Zakuni. He Chrono breaks back, and they're gonna have a double kill now for Impact as he Meganars out just before going down. Pobelter against the wall will have to pull to get out, but he goes down to the captive audience. And they're gonna be onto the Infernal. Cloud9 come up huge. And that looked like it was going to be Immortal's fight at the beginning. Huni with a TP right in the middle of everybody, and the damage came down from the Hemo Plague, but the CC from Cloud9 turned it around, and they played that reverse perfectly. They are just chaining their CC together so well and have such crisp team fighting right now. They're not allowing Immortals to lock them down for those final kills, and the turnarounds are just continually there. The Rylai's being yep. completed on the Casio, Impact being so fearless on Nar. It's all the working out for C9 right now. And Pobelter thinks he has the perfect flank. That ward goes down, TPs yep. to it, throws down on three. On those, three. Those are the two damage dealers. They get very low. Smoothie blocks the ultimate, and Sneaky and Smoothie get away where Jensen's now in a corner, and he doesn't have threat on him. Meteos covers the ground, and they now Immortals are in full retreat. Yeah, and again, the Bard ultimate does go down onto the right. end, but it's a one-shot right. off, and you're basically just trading ultimates at that point, so C9 can then continue the fight, and that is not what Rainover wants to see. Now 0-3 on the game. Going to be difficult. You obviously know this is the best of series. You still want to win each one. So with that in mind, there's that extra weight now on Immortals here to make this game one again in their favor, falling down 5,000 gold. And uh, the dominoes keep falling. Every time Meteos can get in range, he's got somebody as well on those Zack hits. And they've only sta almost taken down Rainover three times. 
and you can see that rain over right there flashes into the magical journey because he's just yeah. so scarred from if i die you know they've shown they have enough damage to take me down now the Let's baron has started they know this is happening they chunked Rain over with the curtain call. Oh, not there. He's Impact on the bottom. is fighting 2v1 right now. Rain is going to go down. Impact able to just soak up so much damage. Turtle in. He's got that Muramana finish. They're trying to put down the damage. Great job from Mahuni and Wild Turtle. And again, Cloud9 try to go for Baron. And this may just be them and their fate going away here for this game. This one was a little more painful, though, because they actually suffer casualties thanks to Wild Turtle consistently DPSing on the backside of that fight. He had just transformed his man immune into a Muramana, so he was hitting really hard. Yeah. And C9 really overestimate their strength going for that Baron. Yeah, Impact, it looked like he didn't expect that much damage to come through and ends up dropping when Huni comes back in again. This is a good call from C9 in theory because you see Pobelter on the bottom side of the map. You already chunked out Rainover and Adrian gets low. Then they all go on to Rainover and they really aren't paying too much attention to Wild Turtle. Exactly, and after they get that kill, they either should have continued on to Wild Turtle or just completely cooled off the Baron because they never actually deal dealt with the biggest threat that was in the fight and that was Wild Turtle. So Huni also was able to come in from the top side and pick up another kill, and that actually keeps the game quite close. So finally, Impact going for that Guardian Angel. A little bit of defense. Aegis of the Legions being finished up here for a bit of that magic resistance, which is imperative against these immortal teams. I always love to bring that AP to the table, and once again, they have done so with the Vladimir and Echo composition. I'm looking to round that out with Ezreal. Three to nine here, 27 minutes in. Again, Cloud9 approached the Baron and they've been pushed away twice. Yeah, and a lot of this game is about setting up the right team fights, and it's yep. something C9 has been able to do. Uh, I do want to talk about the ideal team fight for Immortals, though, because we keep talking about Adrian all things sneaky. That is good, but it needs to be followed. If they yeah. can follow that with Huni or Pobelter, then it works. But it could also just be a pick. Pobelter's in trouble. Rain over on the back line. You take away that synergy of one. Dustbringer goes down. Glacial Fisher as well. And a rain over. This could mean Baron as well. The 50-50 is off the table. Huni is going to get taken Huni's down, down already. Before he can even use his ultimate. 45 seconds on the clock for these death timers. And now it's just Immortals trying to toy with Cloud9 as Impact gives the medicine right back to Poe Belter here. I really feel like the synergy is just not working for Immortals right now. So much of the year has been Adrian following up on Huni and Rainover. But in this combination, Huni and Rainover need to follow up with Adrian. And he seems to be waiting for them to make the move anyway, and yep. they're getting very ineffective Bard ultimates. Now C9 with two dead, turn for Baron yet again. And here comes CP from Impact Wild Turtle. Gonna have to go over the wall and get out of there. But oh, oh my God, oh, audience! Into the deadly flourish. It, you couldn't have planned it better. But it works out for Cloud9 once again. Unfortunately for Immortals, now this Baron will fall. But yeah, do they give it up? Rainover and Huni are on their way. It's going to be the shield up. Unbreakable for Smoothie. It's what he's been for the team. Just about all split long. He tries. Huni's in the back of the pit. Last time in the front. Parallel convergence is over, but he was not in it. Medio still has time to move. Huni now taking some shots. Impact jump oh towards the God, team. Pobalt oh. is going to take a last hit here. The Miasma out. Oh. One last Q. The Noxious blast uh. over the wall, but he can't get in range. Pobalt just stays alive. Oh, yeah. Just flash. That's the name of the game in that one. And Cloud9 say thank you for Baron. And now they're going to start heading forward down mid. A completely hectic series of events Absolutely there. Absolutely crazy. Zoning them off. They're going to get more off of this. C9 have been playing these fights better because it's a little bit easier for them to execute because Immortals have drafted themselves a composition that is very hard to execute. Yeah, and Immortals is also throwing themselves into the fire over right. and over again, and C9 is laying in wait. When we see that fight again, I really want to call attention to Jensen's Cassiopeia mm -hmm. because I felt like his DPS uptime was incredibly high. Like, he was doing the majority of the damage in that fight like he had to and really matching Cobalter. Watch this. So C9 is taking the Baron on one side. Huni's flanking around the side, but it's just Jensen. He positioned himself away from Huni and Adrian, then just shreds through Rainover, and there's no way he's allowing Pobelter to walk through him to the rest of the team. C9 is actually distracted with the Baron right there to finish it off, and it's because Jensen was just bodying two people on the other <laughs> side of the fight. You don't say. Yeah, the command was given. I apologize for the meme, but that's exactly what he was doing. <laughs> well, you never have to apologize for memeing. <laughs> yeah. IMT cleaning up every resource they can in their jungle so it does not go to Cloud9. Anything past this Dragon Pit right now is owned by them. And we've seen Immortals come back from more. A bigger deficit than this, so cannot count them out just yet. They're also hitting a few more breakpoints. 
Wild Turtle needs to start, I don't know, he needs to have kind of more of a backline safety, but everybody on his team is diving in. Yeah, but they're also getting caught too, and I think Sneaky's True. Jin deserves a lot of credit here, as well as Smoothie, because you look at how many times Rainover's been caught, it's usually from that, they get yeah. the binding, and then the Zack has the elastic slingshot in with the follow-up, the knockback, and they're just catching somebody out before these fights even start, large portion of the time. Yeah, and with Baron buff up right now, it's the attempt of the seed. You can see how well Immortals would be able to clear it, but Impact has a split pushing build as well as the Guardian Angel, and they're trying to do a classic 4-1 split push here. Jensen's Miasma does so much covering that ground from Hooney coming in. Turtle trying to get a few shots and then get out. They really get a little bit more time to work with here as they approach these structures. Back to the top lane, looks like Cobalt is going to be taking care of Impact for now. But that GA is definitely going to be a problem. Deadly Flourish onto Turtle, he's going to take a bit more poison. I say a bit, almost goes down. A great hit up from Rainover, but can the rest of the team follow? That has been the question. He is a focus and he goes down immediately as Pobelter finds himself left alone on the front line. Another one, a triple goes to Sneaky, looking for the Quadra, who he's just out of range of the curtain call as he exits stays left and Adrian will make it to the fountain another three go down and that's been the special number for C9 in these fights and C9 are gonna push for an inhibitor here and get so much off of that the picks that they're getting there's so much damage on the wild turtle he can't even rejoin the fight and that's when immortals decide to engage is when their DPS has been pushed off and we also have to keep in mind at this point in the game cloud nine is really far ahead so they might actually Absolutely. end the game off those three kills on to that last nexus turret sneaky with the focus Meteos knows can't tank too long. The Nexus is opening game number one. And after a very even 15 minutes, this bomb exploded for Cloud9, and it is one to zero. Yeah, slow start, fast finish for Cloud9. 18 kills after not getting first blood until about the 15 or 16 minute mark. And that's gonna leave a sting for Immortals knowing they have to win three of the next four. Yeah, slow for the beginning, but as soon as they were able to take these risks and they had already gotten some dragons and some good team fights, Immediately, they tried Baron at 20 minutes. They are trying these things. That's the boldness to just try and close the game out immediately at 31 and a half minutes. Absolutely incredible that they are taking these types of risk right here in the North American Regional Qualifier with Worlds on the line. They are showing no fear. And the intensity in this game shows. These are my favorite types of games because the teams come in at such an even level that Immortals could do that same thing next game. They can yeah. come out even, they could come out even stronger and make it happen in, you know, say a 27 minute game. Both of these teams have that capability. And we hear about Huni Tilt fairly frequently about, oh man, he's, and a lot of times Huni can have a terrible game and bounce back with a great game. But I'm a little bit worried about Reynolds yes. because okay. the entire yeah. playoffs, he has seemed not quite on his game. There was so much lane swapping. Previously, Rainover is extremely good in that meta, but ever since 6.15, it doesn't seem like he's able to assert the same type of dominance that he had had over other junglers, and he's getting caught out of position, and his early game ganks just aren't hitting. Rainover, if anyone, needs to pick up and be the strong player. Yeah, which is very curious because Immortals were confident when the theory of 615, and then when they got on stage, it seems like something they just haven't completely adapted to yet. Yeah. And we'll see if they have something else to put into practice here, as it's going to be an amazing series. Game one has gone to Cloud9.